Good evening, friends. This is Tuesday, March 24th. My name is Kama Hamilton Morton. I'm the pastor uh, that serves alongside the folks of Grace United Methodist Church in South Denver. It is dark. We're taking a deep breath and gathering in community across the waves of air and electronics. The last few days have brought more layers of uncertainty and decisions and how, what does it mean to be in community with each other? This last Sunday at Grace, we had our very first online only worship service and there were just a handful of us just right near the front of the sanctuary and we provided a worship experience including special music and the children's time and it was actually pretty fun and um, folks seemed to enjoy it and we got some good feedback it was a neat experience and then things changed this week so today in the city of Denver at 5 p.m. we are now officially at a stay-at-home order so very little movement outside and the hope is, the intent is, if enough of us can truly stay hunkered down, that we can lessen the impact of the virus, that we can um, lessen the amount of people that will um, unintentionally and asymptomatically share the virus with others. So I will continue to work at home this week doing a lot of Zoom video calls, and um, it has gotten me thinking about what it means to be community, how we are community, how we can be community, and the fact that in our Christian faith tradition, throughout history as we hear stories around the world, that uh, people of faith have found ways to come together even when it's difficult and sometimes we have to learn new ways of being together when it's difficult. And so uh, we are given an opportunity in this season to explore that for us. So I hope that you can think about that in your own life, in your family situation, your vocation. You may be in a place that uh, you feel holed in and that it's a cumbersome to be in your home, to be trying to maybe educate your kids, um, to not know exactly how to structure your day, and it can feel just very confining. I am blessed. Uh, Doug and I live in a beautiful, uh, small, 717 square foot condo here in South Denver. But I realized as I was spending more time at home during the day that we're blessed because we have two, we don't have windows, we have two sliding glass doors, one here and one in our bedroom, that overlook a big balcony that goes the whole length of our condo and that uh, we can have the feel of outside uh, even when we are uh, stuck inside. So whatever that is for you, are you finding ways to breathe deep, we're gonna do that in a moment. Are you finding ways to find a little fresh air? Are you finding ways to connect uh, with your deepest self? Maybe with a friend or a colleague or a family member that you haven't talked with in a good long time. I have found in this past week or week and a half that I have had more meaningful conversations with people that um, I hadn't talked with perhaps in a little while and it strikes me that in the busyness and flurry of our everyday normal life when we know that we can just reach out and connect any way we want we don't always take advantage of it and so I invite you to think about the methods that are available to you we are really using the Zoom video conferencing. As a congregation, we're trying to get as many people signed up because we're gonna be worshiping from Zoom this Sunday. And 
but also just one-on-one -on -one conversations. If you're not signed up for Zoom, it's free and you can have conversations with a family member. I had the delight last Saturday of getting all of my, my on my dad's side, the Hamilton kids, my dad and his older brother and his two younger siblings and cousins uh, around the country, we had a Hamilton reunion via Zoom and we had not all seen each other in a long time. And as I was watching the screens of the siblings talking and laughing and connecting with each other, I thought, why did it take this to make us do this? <laughs> so I've had a couple of friendship conversations with people. And sometimes it might be somebody just in, in the same town, but just that sense of seeing somebody's face on the screen and having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation uh, Doug and I got on a Zoom this evening with some friends from our first appointment up in Chester, Montana, the Novaks, and, and we just had a delightful time. And it's like you're in the same room. So I, I invite you to think of who are those people? You know, you just blink an eye and all of a sudden six months has gone by, or a year has gone by, or a phase of your life has gone by um, that... You wonder what's going, what's going on with them. They may wonder what's going on with you. So I invite you to, to consider reaching out as, as a spiritual discipline this week. See, this season of Lent that we're moving through in the Christian faith family is about um, honing ourselves and, and looking inward, uh, holding up the mirror to our inside lives. And so we talk about practices that we can do to connect ourselves that we might shape ourselves more in alignment with how we envision God would want us to be. And so in this season of forced is physical isolation, I invite you to think of a person or two or three to reach out to. And just to, to reach out, I, I mean, Facebook Messenger um, is a great, it's like, hey, when you have a second, give me a call or let's Zoom or, you know, let's, let's connect. And it feels like, again, I don't believe God thrust this disease upon us to punish anybody. Viruses happen, they have since the beginning of time. But out of this circumstance, is there a way for us to find a gift of who we are as God's beloved and who each other are in relationship and to find those new connections in a richness? That in the hurry and flurry and the distractions and the electronic beeps and boops and notifications and this and that, it is just easy to be exhausted and to not be feel connected. So maybe this week that can be one spiritual practice we all work on. I do invite us to, I'm going to sit up straight here and invite us to breathe deep. We're going to uh, breathe in to four counts and we're going to breathe out to four counts. So here we go. Let's breathe in. I invite you to have start a practice of breathing if you do not do so now. I have to sometimes just pause and move my neck and literally um, put my shoulders back. You know, we Americans are known for our bad posture and the fact that we typically breathe out of the top third of our lungs, I, I heard some at one point. And so um, as we think about this virus being a virus of the lungs, of the respiratory, one of the exercises and practices we can literally do to connect to ourselves better is to breathe deeply and slowly. And they say that even just a few long, slow, deep breaths can send oxygen to our brains and our limbs and, and our body in ways that uh, we often don't allow ourselves to have that healing presence. So we will breathe together through this season, my friends. I um, have just a brief verse from Ephesians that uh, caught my eye tonight just to 
hone in. This book is called A Wesleyan Spiritual Reader. And Reuben Job uh, was a retired, uh, was a bishop in the United Methodist Church, and he's done a number of wonderful resources, uh, Three Simple Rules, and um, other things that have, in our Wesleyan Methodist tradition, have invited us to center into those practices that, that uh, bind us together in our Wesleyan heritage. And so I'd like to share this brief scripture passage from Ephesians chapter 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. I invite you to find your Bible. That's from Ephesians chapter 4. That's in the New Testament. It's a little letter that is attributed to Paul. Uh, the early church uh, and uh, boy some holistic imagery one body one spirit you know we live in a time when we are so uh, inundated with admonitions to separate ourselves are you this kind of person or are you this kind of person um, what gender are you what race are you what ethnicity are you what box can I put you in? And so I, I was very selfish, perhaps, my eyes when I, when I came upon this reminder from Ephesians 4. Ultimately, we are one. There is nothing that separates us uh, often but uh, time, space, stories, a little bit of melanin on the surface of our skin that in, through centuries has divided us uh, into us and them. So may we return to this Ephesians text or others that talk about that that's so futile. And here we are, sisters and brothers. So I'm going to read it real quickly again. Ephesians 4, 4 to 7, if you want to find your Bible. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Above all through all, in all. Have you thought of yourself as being a part uh, of God's Spirit, connected to every other living thing, that God is above all, through all, and in all? That that presence of Christ that we yearn for and pray for is there for the taking, for the naming, for the feeling, if we can but open ourselves to it? <sighs> if only we could stay connected with that in our day-to-day. So as we prepare to rest this night, may you know that you're not alone. May you know that the God who created the cosmos and the stars in the sky and the mountain ranges which tower over us has created every cell in your body and muscle and breath that you take and has connected you with every other being in this planet and beyond. May you feel held and loved in that grace that is beyond understanding and meaning, but that connects each of us. We are part of God's ultimate web, web of connectivity and relationship. May we feel that even as we are physically isolated. And I'd like to close with a song in, um, I think in our United Methodist Hymnal, it might be 431. And it just, as I was thinking, just what is it that I needed today? This song came to my mind. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. With God our creator, children all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now, right now, 
with every step I take. Let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. song is that it's not just inspirational, but it's aspirational. Because we know that not every moment are we able to live into it fully. But as the scripture tonight calls us to remember that we are one, one with each other, connected to the one God who is with us and in us and through us. We are called to this call to peace. And we know in this day there are many things to raise up our anguish, our emotion, our call to bring justice into the world through uh, legislative means or relational means. And yet underneath that grounding we are called to strive for peace within ourselves and in our ability to connect with others. So wherever you find yourself tonight, whatever your brokenness is that you're feeling, your anger, your anguish, your impatience with yourself or with others, your fear, your anxiety, that cuts to the core of who we are, I invite you to consider that web of interconnectivity and that you have gifted the world with yourself, that God has uh, given you gifts to share, and that may we find ways to be with one another in this time. Grace and peace to you. May you be held in love this night. May you rest well. And may you see God, may you see the holy, may you see possibility in and through you and others this week. Amen. And good night.